Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome back to Civilization 6 where we're playing as Byzantium and we're going to be trying to do some very interesting things today. Somebody commented in one of my previous videos asking me to try to do a Warrior Monk game on DD difficulty. Now previously a few patches ago, I think it was about maybe a year or two ago, Warrior Monk on DD was basically non-viable. However, since then, Byzantium has come out and some of the changes have been made to where it's actually possible to get the Warrior Monk Belief on Deity Difficulty without having to completely get lucky and get Stonehenge, for example. So I figured we would give it a try and I decided to do it as Byzantium because of their particular strength when it comes to mixing religion and war. The last time I did it, I did it as the Zulu on Emperor Difficulty and even that was a little bit of a struggle. I do think of the two civs that like you could do this on, Byzantium and the Zulu are the best choices. Now, if we take a little bit of a look at our starting location here, we are starting on a grassland hill, which isn't an ideal tile to settle on. Ideally, you want to settle on a plains hill, but that does not look like it's available here. We are playing with the Got Lakes map mod, which has generated a very interesting map for us. And thankfully, I have saved this first turn. So the thumbnail should either be the interesting start location or the interesting map. My instinct is maybe to move towards the banana, starting off with a three food, two, one production tile. That is a 50% uh, growth boost with while retaining that plus one production over working a two food, one production tile. The oasis isn't too bad in of itself either. Um, and there is also potential here for a very high quality commercial hub because I do in fact use the Ocean Caravanseries mod, which gives you plus two adjacency from uh, from Oasis's on commercial hubs because in my head that just makes sense and it's like the only like one of the only gameplay mods I actually use you would be surprised how rarely it comes up but when it does come up it feels very nice I think my instinct is to move to the desert hill but the question is where is my holy site going we are of course naturally going to be going for astrology first here we'll try to get a scout and a settler out before we get our holy site but that'll be all we'll be able to manage in the early game yeah I think on this hill I don't see a better move. I mean, theoretically, the tobacco is really good. And the nice thing about moving down here is we do move closer to the tobacco. And that will probably be one of the first tiles that the city claims. Also, there's a two, two tile here as well. I just think the tile quality, if we move down one, is really, really high. So I think I think that's the move. Even if we are on this weirdly, <clears throat> this weirdly micro-shaped lake, I still think it's a totally reasonable thing to do. We will go ahead and make sure that we lock in the bananas because we want to work the bananas. Now, just to keep in mind, right, what the difference is here... The difference between working a two food one production tile and a three food one production tile is actually three turns of growth. So imagine working this tile will net me, okay, in five turns, uh, over, over over eight turns, it will net me an extra two production. But remember, that will stack towards the entire game. Every population I will get in the city will come faster as a result of this three food two product or one production tile. Now, unfortunately, our production isn't very good. We're only at the standard four production start. No extra production, which will make it a little bit tight to go for things like a double scout or a monument here. I could go monument first if I really wanted to, if we wanted to try to push things in the right direction i do think that scout settler opener is like the safest opener generally speaking when you're going for a fast religion because in your second city you can either produce military units to defend yourself or something like that now getting an early builder is quite handy because we do have sheep here now the unfortunate thing about pastures is they actually give production if i recall correctly until you get stirrups so this Sheep tile won't be particularly useful until quite late into the game. However, there is the potential here for a bit of a Petra. Like, we could go for Petra, we could go for Pyramids. Uh, since it is a domination game, I think we'll probably be landing more on the side of Holy Sites, more on the side of Encampments, and then potentially even Hippodromes, because we are, of course, playing as, as Byzantium, and they get unique heavy cavalry units and also free heavy cavalry units when they build their hippodromes, as you can see over here. Uh, heavy and light cavalry do full damage against cities, uh, following the same religion as Byzantium, so we want to get Crusade if we can, and gain the Tagma unique unit when Divine Right is discovered. Units receive plus three combat strength or religious strength for each holy city converted to Byzantium's religion, including my own holy city. A Byzantium's religion is spread to nearby cities when defeating a unit belonging to an enemy civilization or a city-state. Now the thing about warrior monks is, they do not get, they do not get much stronger over the course of the game. So you Usually you want to pick a sieve that has some sort of early tempo or scaling benefit like the Aztecs or Byzantium. 
they are going to help your warrior monk stay relevant long into the late game because the, the warrior monk is very much so sort of a mid game early to mid game unit so that's something you do have to keep in mind we have found crater lake and that is quite nice because that will give us the boost for astrology now it gives a little bit of extra research i need to think about which tile that i would like to place my holy site on it would ideally be here there is also some really nice honey over here so we could potentially settle on this honey next to Crater Lake and net actually a really good city. We could go for Lady of the Reeds and Marshes. I'm seeing a decent amount of marsh actually. So that's something we could consider. I'm going to start using my builder to scout because I have no tiles I can improve. It's usually fairly safe to scout along hills with a builder. There is Eleanor. Okay, so meeting Eleanor, we have to send her a delegation to keep her happy. We want to make sure that we keep a relatively good first impression. We're also going to want to trade route relatively early to trade with her. I'm going to send my scout to the left so I can discover more information. And then I'm going to circle my warrior back to defend my city. First things first is we get ourselves a settler. And I think the big key here would be if we could grow to that tobacco. We will grow to it next turn, which should significantly speed up the rate at which we get that settler. 11 turns. That's very much so. Uh, 12, I, I would say eight turns for your scout and then 12 turns for your settler is like what I would consider this build to be on par in the early game. Just to like give you an idea. We have met Kumasi, but we were not the first to meet Kumasi. Now Kumasi's benefit is that they give plus two goal, uh, plus two culture and plus one trade route for every specialty district in the origin city when you're trading to city-states. So this is quite powerful if you want to go for a friendly relationship with city-states. Eleanor is fairly close by, which has me a little bit concerned about the integrity of our mid-game. And we may have to just settle for a plus one campus here because we're not going to have the gold to buy the tile that we really want to put it on, which is this tile here or potentially this tile here. So we'll have to settle for a plus one holy site, which is, you know, the far from ideal, but not completely worthless either. We actually have managed to grab two builders here, um, which is quite impressive. So I'm thinking about what I need in the early game is production. So after astrology, I'm going to head immediately for mining so that I can put a mine on this tile. Okay, there's a barbarian encampment over there. We're going to loop around. We have some really, really good game knowledge right now. And getting two free, well, two builders off the bat is very, very helpful. Now we have access to astrology. I'll wait until next turn to potentially place it. I won't be able to clear this barb camp with my scout, so I'll kind of loop around it and see where that takes us. I'm a little bit concerned that she, yeah, she's preparing for a war with me. So this is just what we call an unfortunate roll. Uh, this is going to have to be a re-roll, unfortunately. Uh, this is why early religion, this is why early religion doesn't work on deity difficulty. This is why the China build doesn't work on deity difficulty. Uh, there is nothing I could have done here, right? I've literally built... A, a scout and put most of my production into a settler, right? It is a blind gamble build and it's it's the necessary blind gamble build that you have to go for in order to get a religion. If I successfully defend myself from this war, I will not get a religion. That is the problem here, okay? So that is why this build is so terrible. And if I don't get a religion, I don't get warrior monks. Bada bum, bada bum, bada bum, bada bum. So I hope you can see why now the the reason why the China build doesn't really work on Deity is because if you spawn near someone on Emperor, you can defend yourself but I, I, while still getting a religion. Whereas on Deity difficulty, I'm just not going to get a religion this game. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it out so I can show you. But like already, this settler being blocked is like crippling to my economy. I have no forest chops. I can't even chop out a unit. Uh, my warrior is out of position. You know, and it wasn't like I set my warrior on like a big long journey. He was just like slightly out of position and she's going to declare war on me here very, very soon. There's not much I can do to defend myself. Yep, there you go. So I've already lost this war. Uh, there's nothing I can do. Um, I can't get units out in time. I'll be crippled for 100 turns and I won't get a religion. I, I know that based on my experience playing the game. So we're just going to hit the restart button. I could, I could play this game out and win it. But the goal here is to do it with warrior monks, okay? Like... That is the thing. And that just is not going to happen in this particular game setup. But yeah, it, it, you, like, you've seen me defend from that kind of a war a, 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 a thousand times. And it, it's definitely possible for me to hold my city. But the problem is that, uh, you know, I, I just, I won't be able to do the thing that I want to do. The, the, which is why I think these strategies are weak, which is why I go, it, it's why I describe like the China build that we did in the previous series. Uh, where you go for wonder tourism and a wonder religion, that would be what I would consider to be a low reliability strategy. And warrior monks are also a low reliability strategy. Now, I think warrior monks are actually quite viable in multiplayer. But when you're going up against the deity AI, 
it just it, it too many variables kind of work against you now i'm really tempted to move onto the coffee if i moved onto the coffee and settled on the coffee not only would i get the coffee immediately i would start with plus one culture and a two two tile with another culture on it is there a reason for me to not move to that coffee that's the real question i don't think i see a reason not to move there i've got fresh water as far as the eye can see and this just looks like an objectively amazing place to settle a city so hopefully this game pans out a little bit better. I am using the gently randomized uh, map script that I, I built using the Got Lakes map mod. Um, this is a much better start, okay? We're starting with an extra two culture. We're starting with uh, five production rather than four. And we, we don't get the plus one food, but this is like a much more reasonable start, right? We'll be able to get out a, a scout. We might even be able to get a, uh, you know, well, probably actually maybe because of the way that the growth lines up, unless I, do I have a three food tile somewhere? Based on the way that the growth lines up, I could go for a warrior here rather than a scout because that would line up with the eight turns it's going to take me to grow. And then I could go for the settler on my next my next round. We're going to go straight for astrology again. We are going to want to get a religion ASAP. It's completely necessary for this build for us to get a religion. Enemy barb camp. It's quite good to find these very early, actually, because it means we can clear them out and get a little bit of extra gold. It lets us buy tiles. The unfortunate thing is it's next to a volcano and we will take a lot of damage on the first attack. But once we heal up, we'll slowly break down their uh, combat strength. Now we can plug in Discipline alongside God King. Do I want my Pantheon? What Pantheon would I care about this game? You know, sitting here thinking about it, I can't really think of any Pantheons that I care too much about. Maybe I would prefer to get plus one production here to get my settlers out a little bit quicker. And I think that is the play here. So we'll take Discipline plus Urban Planning. I don't need God King. I should be fine without it. Oof. Yeah, look how well defended that Spearman is. It's going to take me a few turns to break him. I'll get myself healed up and start attacking again. Now, in terms of where we want to go here in the Civic Tree, generally speaking, we want to hit Political Philosophy and Theology. So we're definitely going to have a focus on the bottom half of this tech tree. But we also need to hit Games and Recreation too, because we're playing Byzantium, who has, you know, a lot of benefits. Jesus, plus three amenities from entertainment. Is that really the benefit? That's insane. Is that... This is unmodded, right? No mod, like, activated itself? God, that's just, like, sick. I gotta, like, Google this to make sure it's not, like, weird. Because I do not remember it being that good. It's actually just plus three amenities. That's insane. So if we're talking about opening moves, I think craftsmanship is usually a good opening move. It gives you Agog and Ilkum, which are both valuable in certain circumstances. Our warrior finishes on the same turn that we grow, so we can begin a settler. We're working a deer tile. Yeah, I'll accept the working of a deer tile. Because what should happen is, the reason why I, th I don't need to work a lot of food right now. Because what will happen is, any of the surplus food that the city builds up in this pool will get reset. Like the, the cap of the pool will get reset when the settler pops out. So this city will be about halfway grown by the time I finish the settler. So, you know, working the extra production is actually the right move here. When you're building settlers, food has very, very low value. Like I, I would really recommend against working food. We have the found Muscat. That is a commercial city-state. Uh, we are not the first one to meet them. And they give you plus one amenities in cities with a commercial hub, which honestly kind of pales in comparison to some of the bonuses here. And you can see actually the map script uh, in full swing here. This is the biodiversity setting in the map script where if the map spawns an awful lot of desert or snow or tundra, it can actually allow more types of terrain to spawn there. You can't put, de you can't put forests here or anything like that, but sometimes desert will spawn... Uh, with jungle on top of it to make it a little bit more valuable uh, in terms of land. This this should probably be a very hev heavily desertified map if this is spawning here because with the biodiversity setting. If you don't like that, you can always just turn it off. I'm going to attack one more time and this will get me my promotion and then I should be able to clear the barb camp. No problemo. Of all the promotions, Battle Cry is usually the better one because it works on the offense and the defense. So it just has more all around situational benefits. Let me clear the barb camp there's 30 extra gold my question is i think it might be worth it to spend 75 gold to get this plus two holy site over here that plus two holy site should help us secure a pantheon relatively easily now, the real question is where is our second city going i think one of the critical things we want is fresh water we want fresh water plus a high quality settlement that's really the two things that you're looking for I definitely feel like down here, I'm seeing a lot of high yield tiles, decent food, good, really, really good production down here. I think this is a fantastic second settlement. I could go on the ivory. On ivory is like really close to my capital is the only thing. It kind of eats up capital tiles, but on the ivory is quite powerful because it would give me a second amenity 
And a second amenity would boost my capital up to uh, plus one amenity uh, or plus three amenities. So maybe, yeah, maybe we'll go for that. Get those early amenities. We can sell them to the AI. There's a lot of power in that. And a free relic. I swear to God, I actually, there, I have, there is somebody up there in this in the sky looking down upon me because every time I go for some kind of religion game, I find a relic. <laughs> I swear to God. Okay. YouTuber Look is alive and well. Welcome. Welcome to the, to the to the based department. We have just won the game. So we did just pick up craftsmanship. I don't think I want to change anything in here. I think I'm happy with the way things are. I can't believe I found a relic. I People are going to accuse me of cheating. I swear to God. While I would like military tradition, it's not a priority. I will grab foreign trade because traders are quite powerful and useful. Now we have access to astrology. That's quite good. We can finally place our holy site. Now the question is, a plus two holy site, while perfectly acceptable. Do we delay the holy site by two turns to get a scout? I think we do because of the value that's represented by tribal villages. Tribal villages can give you a lot of value if you can break them, uh, if you can crack them open for their, their loot boxes inside. So we have astrology. I think the next step is almost always to pick up mining. You pick up mining so that you can chop things, so you can improve hills. Thousand year flood. We have gotten a little bit of an isolated start, which is not what I want. I don't want an isolated start because that means it's going to be a very slow burn until I actually attack someone. Let's go ahead and settle on the elephant. Perfect. Now, this is a low food area, but that could be corrected with, uh, you know, a little bit of finagling. I could go straight holy site here, and there is a plus two holy site down here to the southeast. Here's the thing. I don't need, like, that many holy sites. Well, here's the thing. I got a lot of things I could build right now. I could go for, well, I already have a monument in my capital, theoretically, because of the double coffee resources. So that seems like totally reasonable. I could go for another holy site. This would significantly increase the rate at which I gain my religion. And this is a relatively fast holy site as well. This would give me a lot of faith in the early to mid game. I could go for a monument, like I said, to get my culture up. Getting my culture up would get me to cards like colonization faster, getting me to my tier two government faster. I don't have a particular use for builders right now. I could get scouts to learn more about the map. Part of me feels that... If we're going to work a low food tile, we should probably buy that deer tile so it's an even, it's an extra production on top of that. And then instead, we'll go for the monument to get the culture, but then we'll go for the holy site, I think. We'll go for the holy site as soon as we have the gold to buy another tile. We found another barb camp. That's quite useful. I am going to grab that tribal village first, however, because that's another 40 gold, which means I can now buy the tile. Perfect. And place the holy site. I think getting a little bit of infrastructure here nice and early will be helpful. The great bath has gone, which is kind of to be expected at this stage of the game. It's around turn 25, which is usually when the Great Bath finishes. Okay, we found Nubia. Now, Nubia is a little bit of a double-edged sword because she tends to build a lot of ranged units. But hopefully she is nearby. I don't have the goal to send her a delegation. Uh, I'm going to, well, am I benefiting from positive amenities? I kind of am in my capital. That's a 10% yield boost. 10% growth, 10% production, 10% gold. Here's the thing. Across all of my yields, this is actually like a very, very small amount. Where am I getting faith from, by the way? Oh, right, my relic. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> The relic. Hell yeah. I'm going to go ahead and just sell this for 80 gold. This will allow me to immediately send her a delegation, which lowers the probability that she declares war on me because I want to be the one to declare war on her. I'm the one who wants the temple. Uh, we do now have access to traders, which I probably want to get. At least for a road. We also found Matterhorn. Okay, this is huge. I'm pretty sure I found this in my Zulu game where I was going for warrior monks as well. So plus three combat strength when fighting in hills and ignoring hills for the rest of the game is quite a powerful benefit. I'm going to want like all of my military units to walk by this, this thing. Very, very excited now at the potential of this game. Let's start working on early empire. I think that's the next step. We can also choose our pantheon. There's a lot of really viable pantheons in this game. I think in terms of appeal, you know, earth goddess would be quite good. We definitely, um, a lot of our units are going to be built using faith, right? Warrior monks can be purchased with faith. So something that generates faith is probably a good idea, but also production is quite good. You know, I'm seeing like a decent amount of Wait, was that on the previous map? No, there's like a little bit of marsh here. So something that gives production, like the Lady of the Reeds and Marshes. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm having a... <clears throat> excuse me. I'm having a moment. Uh, I don't think I need a builder right now. God of War actually could be quite good. Because like, if you think about it, let me zoom out here. I'm building a holy site here. This entire area in white is where I would get 50% of units combat strength. 
as um, faith. And don't forget that Byzantium already gets a benefit for killing units, right? When we kill units, we spread our religion. So this just seems kind of like a really good, powerful combo. It's also a pantheon I almost never go for. Let me have a little bit of a think about this. Byzantium already benefits from extra great people points, so we don't need Divine Spark. I don't see a particularly huge amount of marshes inside my territory, so I don't think Lady of the Reason Marsh is a particularly good one. River Goddess is fine. Both of my holy sites are on rivers, but here's the thing. Is that really that big of a deal without like the extra food to go along with it? I mean, amenities are great and all, but here's the thing. We're all about being aggressive. I don't think I need Monument of the Gods because most of my units will be built with Hippodromes and or Faith. I don't see a whole lot of pastures around to make fishing boats or to make a God of the Open Sky worth it. Goddess of the Hunt, on the other hand, you know, there's a camp, there's a camp. There would have been an elephant camp here. There's a camp there. Maybe if I hadn't settled on top of the elephant, it would have been good to pick that up. But Goddess of the Camp, Goddess of the Hunt, rather, that would have been quite a good one to pick up here. And I know it's not very good, but I think it would be fun to play God of War with Byzantium. I almost, I almost never, ever, ever do I pick that Pantheon. But I think in this particular situation, I can get away with it because I got that early relic. I don't need my Pantheon to do my heavy lifting for me. Now, she did denounce me, which is a little bit of a problem, but I'm hoping that I can overcome that, that denunciation. Um, I, I need this, like, city side to attack this. So with the advent of mining, one of the big key things is we want to get to Divine Right to access the Tagma relatively early into the game. So our tech tree can be relatively open, like just picking up things like camps and picking up things like plantations so that we can improve resources. I think that's a totally reasonable thing to do. Okay, perfect. You attack the thing and then I get to take it. Nice, an extra 30 gold. I got 120 gold in the bank. Not quite enough to buy a shrine. Here's the thing. What are the big advantages of Byzantium is that they get plus one great profit points. So they can kind of get away with slow building a shrine for the great profit points. Let me have a little bit of a think about that. I want to build a monument, I want to build a shrine, and I want to build a trader before I start settling. That's the that's what I want to get done here. But I also need to keep an eye on what you know Nubia might do. So I think I'm going to switch to animal husbandry and make a trio of slingers. If I'm going to make a trio of slingers, I'm going to go ahead and switch in a gog so that I build those slingers faster. So I build them in three turns rather than four. That'll shave a significant amount of the production cost here. Let's start moving warriors back. This is mainly for defense because we're actually in a position this game where we can get a religion and defend ourselves. Like that little bit of extra space between us and the AI is really all we need to defend here. So even if they do come at me here, I should be relatively well positioned to defend. I have multiple rivers defending my civilization. I'm expecting a war declaration here very soon. She's probably going to go for Thessalonica. Let's kind of see what she decides to do. Is my second slinger. I need one more. So my hope is that she'll see my relatively large army that I've amassed here and uh, she will be discouraged from attacking. Okay, this is a pretty strong defensive line. Now I feel safe to go pick up other things. I would like to pick up settlers, but I'd like to get my shrine too. Let me have a little bit of a look here. I am first to a religion this game. So grabbing the shrine, I think, is a perfectly legitimate thing to do. Here's the war. This is what we were expecting. This is all part of the plan. We put the warrior in the city to give the city combat strength. And then we begin shooting with our um, with our slingers. Let's get to work on picking up archery. There's a couple of horses over here, which is quite helpful too. Can I defend with this? If she brings Patati archers, no. The answer is no. So I need to build maybe another warrior or two. But I, I think I can almost hold with this. Let's make sure that our slinger is getting the first shot off. My slinger will probably have to get retreated. We'll see. See how they decide to move things. Can you get this kill? Nice. There's archery boosted. Uh, let me think about how much damage we're going to take. We are across a river, giving us plus... What's the defense of a river again? Hold on, I need to refresh that. It's plus five for river defense. We're in ideal terrain, so that's plus eight. Plus eight would put him at 10 combat strength ahead of us. He will also take a little bit of damage here. I think I would be better off fortifying. Remember, our base combat strength is five. So we're up to 10, 13. Yes, I think I fortify for a turn here and that will keep my slinger safe from death. Perfect. And then I get to fortify. Uh, hello? Can I move my units now? I think the game decided to bug out there, unfortunately. Okay, it looks like reloading the game has fixed things. Um, this guy can take his... I'm going to... Well, here's what I want to do. I want to move you to here. I want to move 
this guy to here and then I want to swap these two and then take the garrison promotion on him so that he does major damage while shooting across the river. So what we're doing is we're slowly collapsing uh, the front line to push it forward al along these rivers. We do now have access to a governor and you know if I'm thinking about governors I do think that Victor here is quite a powerful early game governor for me to pick up this game especially so I can go for embrasure. This would allow my warrior monks to start with a promotion. Starting with a promotion is quite valuable for warrior monks. They have a unique promotion tree that gives them a lot of extra power. I'm also going to want to get Kotoku in which is here because of the 20% faith and four free warrior monks which is quite a valuable thing to pick up. I do feel safe now going for shrines, although it, you could argue that maybe I should be going for settlers, but I'm going to wait until both of my cities have their shrines so I can get that faith going. Early, early faith, two city opener is what we're going for here. And then we'll switch to settler production here in a moment to get our, our cities out. Yep, this is what I expected. I expected my city to take a heavy damage. However, I'm in a position to counterattack now. It's the big advantage is we actually have the uh, capability of doing a counterattack. This is a dangerous attack. But it's also quite safe. We get the kill. We take 10 faith. That's perfect. Remember, we're getting faith from fighting. So this is like kind of in our wheelhouse. Okay. Let's do a little bit of a retreat and consolidation. Looks like they've also levied a city state to come at me. But this is like, this is why I was talking about. Like, this is just so much more defendable than the previous game. Pyramids and Etamanaki. No religions have gone yet, which is extremely surprising. I'm going to get a religion for free, apparently. Which is interesting. There's archery. I'm going to, in particular, look to upgrade my archers that are in good positions. You fortify for a turn. You push the bridge. Make sure you close this gap. You want to be able to move this scout out and then have him retake the holy site. want to make sure the holy site doesn't get stepped on. There's nowhere to move this slinger to get them promoted right now, so I'm going to have them hold position. I would like Moksha this game as well, but I think I'm going to go for Victor. So I can go for unit promotions in the mid game. I know it's a little bit of an unorthodox opener. It would be good for me to get plantation tech. I have one, two, yeah, at least two more amenities, three more amenities tied up in plantations, potentially more, especially if I go for those olives up here to the northeast, although Muscat might grab those. And actually, we're at a triple continent split here, so there's a lot of potential for amenities in this game. Let's go ahead and get this scout out while I retake that position. Make sure you get your attack in. And I want to... I want to focus fire warriors if at all possible, but we're getting damage in now. Um, we're very, very well defended. Perhaps another archer would be salient. Let's have a little bit of a think about it. I think we're in a reasonable position right now. Okay, I want to prioritize getting kills if at all possible, because if they promote, if they promote, it doesn't look good for me. I'm worried about this warrior. He may die. He probably will die. He definitely dies. Well, he's fortified on a hill and he healed, so maybe. Uh, let's go for garrison commander. Victor is not established until next turn, unfortunately. But once he is, we're like... Victor, like, this is the thing. If you can get Victor to help you defend your capital, like, you just you just win. You just win the early game. It, it kind of trivializes it. Uh, go ahead and shoot there. That's a kill. Shoot there. That's a kill. So we're... Chipping away at their kills. We're picking up a little bit of faith from those kills too. 10 faith per warrior that we kill. Let's grab ourselves a trader. And then we'll move into settler production. This slinger took a hit that I wasn't... Ex well, I was expecting it, but I don't like it. Is what I should say. All right, let's continue to bombard the front line. Look, uh, this is just perfect. We're, we're, we're golden. The city is completely defended. Absolutely never will break. Um, yeah, irrigation is next, I think. The world enters into the classical era. Let's try and get a little bit more growth in here. We need to get to our fourth pop. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and swap these two tiles for this city. And you, I want you working at least two food tiles. So Thessalonica making good production. Exodus the Evangelist is quite a good one here for me to pick up because I am about to create a religion, which should be worth quite a bit of error score. I hate that I'm a little bit caught up here and I have to like take the long way this guy's threatening me, but he should die relatively easily. Yeah, this is all working out perfectly. We're farming XP, we're farming Faith. Not only that, but we're taking away Nubia's early game advantage in terms of her units. That's pretty critical too. Not a lot of people would consider that to have high value, but I do. 
everything yeah this is perfect we've gotten so much faith from doing this now i want to actually trade from Constanti constantinople to thessalonica because i want to get the four pop in this city really really fast because i want to go government plaza into stuff but let's go ahead and unlock this we will go ahead and plug in settler card and conscription to save a bit of cash we no longer need to build military units and we will go double settler production very late settlers but they will be valuable settlers let's go ahead and level volley we want to just like hit units as hard as possible um you kill the units you control the spice that's how it works we are starting to see chariots which is slightly concerning the good news is i do hit those chariots hard i'm worried about this trade route however so i may have to do this and move things down slightly i kind of rearrange my front line to be a little bit more aggressive because this needs to thessalonica needs to be protected we can finally found our religion and this will be the religion of this will be uh the religion of mindful guys who punch real good so we get to take warrior monks boom and we get to take crusade perfect so that is the perfect combo here for our game situation now unfortunately we can't actually buy warrior monks until we get temples it that is one of the requirements so pretty much political philosophy into theology will be the play this game please get this kill okay perfect like killing these like actually spread my religion too which is kind of fun and look look at all these combat strength look at that plus three from my my religion uh plus five from garrison commander plus five from promotions um the 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 gov the victor governor i've never actually used victor to defend my cities because i've always just like like hard defended them um but he makes it so trivial victor is just so insanely powerful in the early game for defense let's get that kill boom we spread our religion and we get 10 more faith like it all it just it just works out so well if you if you go for uh this this build works really nicely on the defense actually and on the offense i think i would like to approach these guys right here but the main thing that I think is that I think this episode is over. We have managed to completely defend our capital. We almost have more combat strength than Nubia. We have secured ourselves a religion and we have set ourselves up for the mid game that we really want to have. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.